about um, Maybach Music and mm. Rick Ross. You guys speak so positively about each other. Mm. I'm just curious, what is the current state of your relationship with Maybach and Rick Ross? I mean, really, it's just an affiliation, you know? I, he respects what I do. I respect what he does. I never signed a deal with them. You know, when he needs me, he calls me, and I work for him. When I need him, I can call him, and he'll do things for me. And, and the, uh, the rest of the guys, you know, it's just an affiliation. Probably gonna go to the show tonight, you know? It's just an affiliation, and it's good to be aligned with people that are doing really well in this business. I've had that opportunity to align myself with Raphael Sadiq early on in my career, so certain people will, you know, pull me on and be like, oh, she's dope, let me help her where I can, and he's one of those people. I wanted to know, you just wrapped up a, a great show in London, and you just wrapped up SOPs last night. What's your favorite part of performing? Um, it's nothing in between me and the people. Okay. There's no computer, there's nothing, it's just, me and the people, like, you know, you have social networks and you can connect with people there. But when you're looking eye to eye to someone and they're singing along with your music or they're, you hit a bad note and they make a little funny pit face or whatever, you know, you're, you're just connecting one-on-one -on -one with the people in the audience and I love that. That's my favorite part. Do you have a favorite social media outlet that you use to interact um, with people? I think I like Instagram the most right now. It's okay. like slash between Twitter and Instagram, but that's the only two I really really conduct myself. Otherwise, it's somebody else, like, just kind of feeding what I do in Instagram and Twitter into the other ones. You talk about Pretty Court, singing Pretty, and then getting on stage and then providing so much more yes. to, the, to the performance. What are some of the emotions you provide outside of just providing a pretty sound to get, to get it in their hands, to get it in their ears? Well, I, but I try to come from uh, my, my point of view in writing is normally, you know, not as R&B. Okay. You know, I kind of try to write from the point of view of more like a rap record, you know? My conversation on the record is not just all super lovey-dovey, you know, like on All I Ever Wanted, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, a man that wants to give me money to compensate for the love I'm giving to him. He doesn't want to extend love back, okay? So if you're giving me money, I take your money, I flip your money, I make my own money, what do I need you for? Because you're not trying to give me love. That's not the subject matter that most people would talk about. It's going on all the time, you know? Especially, I don't know if guys deal with that with women, but women deal with that with guys. It's like, you know, well, I pay everything and blah, 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 I'm gonna cheat all over you, and what you gonna do? Because I'm just gonna give you money, it's like, Dude, anybody can get money. Any, money is not that big of a deal, you know? So I just try to approach uh, the subject matter more realistic to what's really going on in people's life, you know? I can sing about being pretty, because I'm pretty, but that's not that big of a deal, you know what I'm saying? Like, that don't move me. That's mm -hmm. not, you know, to brag about myself in the record doesn't move me, to just sing about going to parties and stuff like that. I don't really do that anyway, it doesn't move me. People are living real lives. So when I go on stage, I'm 100% myself. Hopefully someone can relate to, relate to that. When I go approach to write a record, I'm 100% myself. Hopefully somebody can re relate to it, but I'm not here to try to make you. You either get into it or you don't, and I think that's something people kind of take to, you know, in my music, that it's like, okay, it is what it is. You know, she is who you, she is. And I find that people either like it, especially my stage performance, they either like it or they don't. Um, Keith from Raiden R&B wanted mm -hmm. to know, he, he was like, Teacher, I'm so, I love your music. I've been following up with you nonstop. He was like, um, I know the mixtape is coming. Are there plans for a full-length album? Yeah, there's always been plans for a full length album. <laughs> and it's, it's an EP that's coming, all original music mix, mixed and mastered. You know, mixtapes, they don't, they don't get mixed and mastered. But the difference is it's all original and mi mixed and mastered. It's called Cognac and Conversations EP. There's always been plans for the Lioness. I just don't want to put out an album that people don't hear. Do you know that what I mean? I don't want to put out an album that people don't hear. I give a lot, even to a mixtape, but an album, you know, like I'm going to, I'm, I have been giving everything to this since the last one, you know, and it's flipped over time, over time. It's turned, I've taken songs, turned them into mixtapes, you know, whatever. But when I give you the lioness, I want someone to be, sit, a, a lot of someone to be sitting there waiting for it. And there's a certain amount of setup and business that I think people don't understand. Let me tell you, I'm a great artist. I believe that. 
I'm not saying I, that I to sound so. I'm not saying to sound vain, but I'm not a good business person. And in this business, you have to be it's a music business, you know, so you have to be very good at music and business, which is kind of freaking awkward because most people that are good at music, that's an out of the box thing. Truly good at music and don't put themselves on a shelf or in a box probably aren't good at something so structured like business, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So yeah, it's something I just have had to work out, you know?